when I started getting interested in radio, I knew that I'd have to make a crystal set, but I couldn't really find any good information on the internet as to how to do that that explained it simply and explained precisely how it worked. Um, and so eventually I worked it out, and I've made one here, and it's the simplest possible crystal radio that you can make, and I'm going to explain it all to you now. And these are all, this is all made from parts that I could get from JCAR or the hardware, and so I've wound a coil myself, and you know I've got a whole bunch of staples and solder connections that I've, you can get from the hardware. Um, you get this connector and the crystal lead piece from JCAR, and the only thing that's not from JCAR is this tuning capacitor, but uh, yeah, I pulled it out of this radio. But there are ways you can get around not having a tuning capacitor, which I'll explain at the end. And so this is the circuit diagram for it. So you can see this is the inductor, which is about 676 microhenries. This tuning capacitor on the data sheet says that it should go from 0 to 142 picofarads. Um, I've got an antenna and ground, which you can't see, because I don't have it hooked up. I've got a diode and a crystal E piece, and this is how it's all connected up. And this circuit is mainly two parts. So the first one is this inductor and the capacitor. And so the way a capacitor works is it stores charges up on, on, on each of these plates. So the positive charges get stored here and some relatively negative charges get stored here. And when a capacitor is disconnected from the circuit, the positive and negative charges hold each other in place across the gap. And when a capacitor is connected to a circuit, let's say that it's shorted here, all of the positive charges, let's say, for the sake of conventional current, are going to come out of this plate, go around in the circuit, and then connect to the negative side and neutralize the charges. So in, in a way, a capacitor is a kind of a basic battery. And this is an inductor. When you pass electric current through a wire, then it, it creates a magnetic field around it, which resists any further changes in current in the wire. And so when you wind up a wire into a coil, then the magnetic fields come next to each other, they add up, and they get stronger, which means that this current impeding force gets stronger. And when you put a core of some ferromagnetic material inside the coil, then the magnetic field gets even stronger still, and that's what I've done here. So I've used an online calculator to work out how many turns of the wire that I've got on this particular coil, approximately, that I would need to get 676.877 microhenries. And so the effect that you get when you connect a capacitor and an inductor in parallel is that let's pretend that the capacitor is charged positively on this side, negatively on this side, and you know it's connected the way that it is here. And so the positive charges come out of the capacitor and they can go through the in inductor and it's initially going to impede this current flow. But Afterwards, you know, its magnetic field builds up, and all the charges get spent into the magnetic field, and it, it, it's at its strongest, and there's nothing in the capacitor. And, well, you know, the inductor wants the current to keep flowing in this direction, and so it collapses its magnetic field back into charges, and charges the capacitor up on the other side. And so then these charges have to go somewhere, so it's going to go back around this way. And in a circuit with zero resistance, a perfect circuit that cannot exist, this would always keep oscillating um, at a particular frequency. But a really interesting property of this circuit is that if you feed AC white noise into it, then it will resonate at a particular frequency that is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times the square root of the inductance times the capacitance, and that's the resonant frequency in hertz. So if I feed AC white noise into this, and it's it's tuned to let's say one megahertz, then only one megahertz will come out to the next stage of the circuit, and I can adjust that tuning to tune to different parts of the AM band with this tuning capacitor, which changes the capacitance. And so the second part of the circuit is this diode and the crystal E piece, and the reason that you need a diode to feed into the crystal E piece is because it's bad at is it's bad at putting electricity through it in 
in both directions. It, it's not very good at handling AC. If you, if you try pulling electricity through it the wrong way, then it'll seize up electrically and, and it won't be very good. So you have this diode here to turn. This signal has gone through the tuner to turn into an AC amplified modulated signal. You feed it through the diode to just turn it into a DC AM signal. And this pencil line above it is the sound that it's supposed to produce. Um, so if you were to put a capacitor here, you could smooth it out and make it look more like this. Um, and I've actually used a shot key diode in the circuit here. Uh, you'll see people on the internet saying you need a germanium diode, rah, rah, rah. But I've, used, I've done fine with a shot key diode. And the reason that they say you need a shot key diode or a germanium diode or whatever is because a regular diode, just a PN junction, requires 0.7 volts across it to start conducting in the forward direction. Whereas a shot key diode only needs 0.2 volts, which is pretty nice for our circuit where the only power we're getting is from the radio wave from the antenna. The last part of the circuit is the crystal ear piece. It has an enormous resistance that I can't really seem to measure on my multimeter. Maybe it's that big or maybe it's some other property. And the crystal ear piece isn't actually where the crystal radio gets its name, it gets it from the crystal diode. Um, and that was a, Oh yeah, so the crystal ear piece is made of what's called a piezoelectric crystal. And piezoelectrics, when you put electricity into them, they deform a certain amount. And so if you pass varying electrical signals into them, they vibrate and produce sound. So this particular crystal, appears of electric crystal in the earpiece has a, a very, very high resistance, which means that it draws very, very little current. You need very, very little current to make it work, which means it's very, very sensitive, which again makes it excellent when you're only getting power from the radio waves. So the signal comes through here, this signal, comes through here, you hear it, and then that all goes back to ground, and then ground is the last component in this radio that I really need to talk about. The reason that you need a good connection to ground is because it sort of, you know, completes the circuit and allows the electrons to start bouncing back and forth, and I've knocked a copper pole a metre, half a metre into the ground in my backyard, but you can also just use a kitchen pipe because for regulatory compliance, all pipes, all metal pipes in your house have to be connected to the ground so that if there's an electrical fault somewhere, you don't get electrocuted when you touch the pipe. And so that's about it for this crystal set. Um, but there are a few other things. One is the antenna. In order to get um, good reception of a particular frequency and to not have any capacitances in your antenna, it has to be longer it has to be longer than a quarter of the wavelength that you're trying to pick up, which for 1 megahertz is 71.5 meters. Now that's pretty impractical, so your antenna is going to affect your reception a bit of your radio waves, because it, it can't be perfect in, in a normal hobby situation unless you, you know, buy a, a specialized antenna. Another thing is, I've got some pretty dodgy connections. Um, and also just by nature of it being a crystal radio with three components, you're not going to have uh, a perfect connection. Um, and so whether by virtue of me living near the ABC broadcast tower, the, the bodginess of the circuit or because of the antenna or a combination of all these things, I can only pick up the ABC radio no matter where I tune the dial. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's not perfect, but the crystal radio was invented when radio stations were few and far between. And finally, if you can't get your hands on a good tuning capacitor because the old ones are expensive and the new ones are kind of crappy, you can make a tuning coil instead. So have a fixed capacitor and have a, a much larger inductor with an air core so you can make it larger without increasing the inductance. And sort of sand the enamel coating off one side of it and only attach one end of it to your circuit and attach a wiper to the other end and effectively shorten, like touch the wiper to where you've sanded off the insulation um, and so you're essentially shortening the coil and that's changing the inductance and that's how you tune the radio. So I think I've explained all the important parts. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments 
and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability.